This is All India Radio. I am Anuja Kumar and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Funeral of former President Pranab Mukherjee to be held with full state honours this afternoon in New Delhi. President, Vice President and Prime Minister lead the nation in paying homage to the departed statesman Pranab Mukherjee. JEE main exam for admission to top engineering colleges in the country being held today. Unlock 4 guidelines comes into force from today. More activities open up in COVID non-containment zones across the country. Nearly 10 lakh 17,000 COVID samples tested in the country in last 24 hours. Over 28 lakh people recovered so far. And monsoon session of parliament to commence from the 14th of September. Hectic preparations underway in wake of COVID-19 pandemic. Former President Pranab Mukherjee's mortal remains reached Lodi Road Crematorium in New Delhi. He will be cremated in a short while from now. Earlier, President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, Congress Leader Rahul Gandhi and the Chiefs of the Three Defence Services were among the dignitaries who paid their last respects to the former President this morning. Former President's mortal remains were brought today to his residence, 10 Rajaji Marg, from the Army Hospital where he breathed his last yesterday. Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba, Chief of Defence Staff General Bipin Rawat, Army Chief General M. M. Naravne, Air Chief Marshal R. K. S. Bhadoria, Navy Chief Admiral Karambir Singh were among others who paid homage to him. RSS Chief Mohan Bhagwat, BJP President J.P. Nadda, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal, Union Ministers Nirmala Sitaraman and Harsh Vardhan, Congress Leader Adhid Ranjan Chaudhary and CPI's D. Raja also paid their respects to him. General public also paid their tributes due to requirement of following social distancing norms and other COVID-related protocols. The mortal remains of the former president proceeded in her van instead of a normal Kern carriage. The Union Cabinet condoled the sad demise of Pranab Mukherjee. The Cabinet also observed a silence for two minutes in memory of the former president. The Cabinet resolution said, in his passing away, the country has lost a distinguished leader and an outstanding parliamentarian. The government had announced a seven-day state mourning as a mark of respect for the former president. Pranab Mukherjee died following a 21-day battle with multiple ailments. He was 84. A seven-time parliamentarian and the recipient of Bharat Ratna, India's highest civilian honour, he was one of the most admired and respected political figures. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, Pranab Mukherjee has left an indelible mark on the development trajectory of the nation. A scholar par excellence, a towering statesman, Pranab Mukherjee was admired across the political spectrum and by all sections of society. The Prime Minister recalled that during his political career that spanned for decades, Pranab Mukherjee made long-lasting contributions in key economic and strategic ministries. एक भी मेरी मुलाकात पिछले तीन साल में राष्ट्रपति जी के साथ ऐसी नहीं रही जिसमें उन्होंने पिता की तरह और मैं बहुत अंतर मन से कह रहा हूँ कोई पिता अपने संतान की जैसे देखभाल करे ये राष्ट्रपति के दायित्व का हिस्सा नहीं था लेकिन उनके भीतर का इंसान अपने एक साथी की चिंता और मैं मानता हूँ कि ये व्यक्तित्व ये संबंध ये रूप राष्ट्र जीवन की लिए एक बहुत बड़ा हम जैसे लोगों को प्रेरणा देने वाला काम होता है और वो काम प्रणवदा ने किया Former President of India and Bharat Ratna Wadi, Pranam Mukherjee, who passed away yesterday, had served as the 13th President of India from 2012 to 2017. There will be a seven-day state mourning in his honor. Here is a tribute. A man of humble origins, Pranam Mukherjee was born in a small village Mirati in Birbhum district of West Bengal as son of freedom fighters Kamda Kinkar Mukherjee and Raj Lakshmi. He acquired a master's degree in history and political science as well as a degree in law from the University of Kolkata. He then embarked on his professional life as a college teacher and journalist. Inspired by his father's contribution to the national movement, Mr. Mukherjee in 1969 plunged into full-time public life following his election to upper 
House of the Parliament. Under the mentoring of late Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, Mr. Mukherjee's rise in his political career was rapid. He served as Union Minister of Finance, Defence, External Affairs and Commerce. Mr. Mukherjee was also Deputy Chairman of Planning Commission. He was elected to Rajya Sabha five times and twice to Lok Sabha. Mr. Mukherjee served as leader of both houses of Parliament. He had extensive diplomatic experience and served on the Board of Governors of the IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and African Development Bank. Mr. Mukherjee was instrumental in spearheading critical decisions of the government on a range of issues such as administrative reforms, right to information, right to employment, food security, energy security, information technology and telecommunication and setting up UIDAI. He was a member of the Congress Working Committee, the highest policy making body of the party for a period of 23 years. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President M. Venkai Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have expressed grief at the demise of the veteran leader. President Kovind said the demise of Pranab Mukherjee is the passing of an era. Mr. Kovind said a colossus in public life, the former president served Mother India with the spirit of a sage and the nation mourns losing one of his worthiest sons. The Vice President said the country has lost an elderly statesman in Pranab Mukherjee's death. He rose from a humble beginning to occupy the country's highest constitutional position through hard work, discipline and dedication. Several political leaders and prominent people from all walks of life mourned the loss of political stalwart. In a tweet, Home Minister Amit Shah said, The former president was a vastly experienced leader who served the nation with utmost devotion. Expressing grief, Defence Mr. Rajnath Singh said, Pranabda epitomized simplicity, honesty and strength of character and he served the country with diligence and dedication. Mr. Singh said Pranab Mukherjee's demise is a personal loss. Information and Broadcasting Mr. Prakash Javdekar said the country has lost one of his finest sons, Bharat Ratna Pranab Mukherjee. BJP President J.P. Nadda said a statesman, Mukherjee served the country in many roles with diligence and determination and is widely admired across the parties for his intellect and perseverance. Senior Congress leader Rahul Gandhi said with great sadness the nation receives the news of the unfortunate device of the former president. Mr. Gandhi said he joins the country in paying homage to him. Several leaders in Tamil Nadu have expressed their condolences over the demise of the former president, Pranab Mukherjee. The state governor, Banwari Lal Purohit, has said, late Pranab Mukherjee has been a statesman par excellence who had tremendous knowledge of India's history and polity. The ruling AIADMK coordinator, O. Pannere Selvam, and coordinator, Ida Pade Palanisami, have said in a joint statement, Pranab Mukherjee has been a multifaceted personality who will be remembered as an eminent parliamentarian. The opposition DMK leader, M.K. Stalin, has said, late Pranab Mukherjee had a prophetic vision for the nation, adding his contributions will be etched in the history of the nation. The TNCC chief, Alagiri, MDMK General Secretary Vaiko, PMK founder Dr. S. Ramadas and many others have expressed their condolences. World leaders have also expressed grief on the demise of former President Pranab Mukherjee. Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli said in his demise, the Himalayan nation has lost a great friend. He said people of Nepal remember his contributions in strengthening Nepal-India relations in different capacities of his public life. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahira Rajapaksha said Pranab Mukherjee was a statesman par excellence, a writer and a man loved by all. He said the passion with which he served his nation is unparalleled. Joint Entrance Examination JE Main for admission to top engineering colleges in the country commenced today with unprecedented preparations. About 9.58 lakh aspirants have registered for the exam to be conducted from September 1st to 6th across 660 centres. This is the first such examination to be held in the post-COVID era involving close to a million students and been held at over 600 centres throughout the country. Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh governments have arranged free transportation for candidates. A group of IIT alumni and students have also launched a portal to provide transport facility to exam centres for needy aspirants. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhrial Nishank has appealed to Chief Ministers to support the candidates. Director General of the National Testing Agency Vinit Joshi said that a comprehensive standard operating procedure for the candidates and centre staff has been put in place to ensure social distancing and secure delivery of the test. 
In Rajasthan, elaborate arrangements have been made to follow COVID protocol and social distancing at examination centers. More from a correspondent. The lockdown imposed in some cities of the state will not be applicable for the candidates appearing for JEE main exams commencing today and NEET exams to be held on September 13. Principal Secretary of Home Department Abhay Kumar told that a hard copy or soft copy of admit card will be considered as a valid pass for the candidates of these examinations and their parents. Free transportation facility will be provided to the candidates by Jaipur City. Transport Services Limited in Jaipur City, while Rajasthan Roadways is providing free transportation to such students across the state. The students just need to show the admission card to avail this facility. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. Gujarat Education Minister Bhupendra Singh Chudasma said that opposition is not considering the interest of majority students. He was talking to media persons after the review of all preparations for conducting the examinations of JEE NEET in Gujarat. AIR Ahmedabad correspondent reports that elaborate arrangements have been made for smooth conduct of JEE NEET examinations due to COVID-19 pandemic. More from our Ahmedabad correspondent. The joint entrance examination mains for admission to engineering and pharmacy courses is expected to see the participation of around 38,000 students this year, compared to more than 44,000 students last year. The lower turnout is likely due to COVID-19 situation. The National Testing Agency will conduct the test at 32 centers in 13 districts in the state from 1st to 6th September. All necessary precautions have been taken in view of COVID-19 pandemic. The NEET exam will be held on 13 September at 214 centers in 10 districts. About 80,290 candidates are expected to appear in NEET examination this year. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Bihar, JEE main examination is underway peacefully across the state. Over 61,000 students have registered for taking examination from today till September 6th at 43 examination centers. Candidates were provided three ply masks at the entrance. Invigilators have been provided with gloves and masks and security personnel have been trained for managing crowds. Adequate police personnel have been deployed to prevent gathering outside examination centers. The state government has requested East Central Railway to operate inter-district and local passenger trains in Bihar to facilitate the movement of candidates appearing for JEE, NEET and other entrance tests. The state government has instructed all the DMs and senior police officers to ensure uninterrupted movement of buses in all districts. The COVID-19 recovery rate has further improved and now it has reached 76.94%. In the last 24 hours, 65,081 COVID patients have recovered and were discharged from the hospitals. Health Ministry said the total number of recoveries has reached over 28,39,882. It said the constantly increasing recoveries have ensured that the actual caseload of the country has reduced and currently comprises only 21.29% of the total positive cases. It said effective implementation of the center's strategic and graded test, track and treat approach has led to higher recoveries and lower fatality. Currently, India's case fatality rate is at 1.77%. In the last 24 hours, 69,921 new cases have been reported, taking the total number of positive cases to 36,91,166. Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the country is 7,85,996. In the last 24 hours, 819 deaths have also been reported, taking the toll to 65,288. During the last 24 hours, more than 10,16,000 tests were conducted. The total number of samples tested so far has reached over 4 crore 33 lakh. Nearly 10 lakh 17,000 COVID samples were tested in the country in the last 24 hours. India has witnessed significant rise in its COVID testing capacity in the last five months. From just 160 labs testing COVID samples on 23rd of March this year, the country today has 1,596 labs. Out of these, 1,006 are government labs, while remaining 590 are private. So far, with an overall testing figure of nearly 4 crore 33 lakh 25,000, the nation has also been able to maintain a remarkably low positivity rate of around 8.5%. 
Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Madhya Pradesh have recorded a positivity rate even lower than 5%. In another row of achievements, all states and union territories have surpassed the 140 tests per day over per million population as advised by the WHO. The national average of tests conducted per 10 lakh population on a single day scaled a new peak of being at nearly 545. Goa, Andhra Pradesh, Delhi and Odisha have conducted over 900 tests per million of their population. Around seven other states as well have registered higher testing figures per million of their population than the national average. The Union Health Ministry informed that the remarkable feat has been achieved by rigorously following the test, track and treat strategy. The week-wise average daily tests conducted in the country has also witnessed a sharp increase from around 2.3 lakh in the first week of July to around 9 lakh in the current week. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Last rites of former President Pranab Mukherjee performed with full state honours in New Delhi. President, Vice President and Prime Minister lead the nation in paying homage to the departed statesman Pranab Mukherjee. JEE main exam for admission to top engineering colleges in the country been held today. Unlock 4 guidelines comes into force from today. More activities open up in COVID non-containment zones across the country. Nearly 10 lakh 17,000 COVID samples tested in the country the last 24 hours. Over 28 lakh pe people recovered so far. And a monsoon session of parliament to comments from the 14th of September. Hectic preparations underway in wake of COVID-19 pandemic. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. In Mizoram, one fresh positive case of coronavirus has been detected in the last 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID-19 cases reached 1,012 in the state. According to the official statement, so far 589 patients have recovered, while 423 patients are presently undergoing treatment. The guidelines issued by the government for Unlock 4 will come into force today. It will remain in force till the September 30th. The Home Ministry on Saturday issued new guidelines for opening up of more activities in areas outside the containment zones as part of Unlock 4. According to the guidelines, metro services across the country will resume from September the 7th, while schools and colleges will remain shut. The centre has also allowed religious, political, social and sports congregations with 100 people to take place from September the 21st with the mandatory wearing of face masks and social distancing. International air travel, except as permitted by the government, will remain suspended. There shall also be no restriction on interstate and intrastate movement of persons and goods, including those for cross-land border trade under treaties with neighbouring countries. No separate permission or e-permit will be required for such movements. States and union territories have been asked not to impose any lockdown outside the containment zones without prior consultation with the central government. Chandigarh administration has lifted the night curfew as directed by the Governor of Punjab and Administrator of the Union Territory, Chandigarh, VP Singh Badnor, in compliance of the directives under Unlock 4 yesterday. Advisor to the Administrator, Manoj Parida, stated that the orders received from the central government regarding Unlock 4 have been circulated for information and strict compliance by all concerned. In Tamil Nadu, buses have resumed operation today following the Unlock 4 coming into force today. Places of worship were open for devotees by following the safety protocols. A report. After about five months, full-scale operation of buses have been permitted from today in Tamil Nadu. Reports from the district suggest that only a lukewarm response has been received by the state-run transport corporations on the first day today. Therefore, buses are being run in limited numbers. Private players are reluctant to play their fleet as they insist on permitting inter-district transport services as well, which remains banned. Famous temples were thronged by devotees since this morning, who were allowed entry into the Sanctum Sanctorum one after the other, after doing the thermal screening and hand washing. Parks, shopping malls and hotels have begun welcoming the guests, who expect the numbers of visitors to swell up gradually. Jay Singh, AAR News, Chennai. Elaborate arrangements have been made in all major temples of Tamil Nadu, including the iconic Madurai Minakshi Amman Temple for devotees to have darshan. 
Madurai Minakshi Amman Temple clarified that people have been allowed inside the temple in small groups. Sanitizers have been made available at entrances for devotees. The darshan timings have been fixed from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Following the Ministry of Home Affairs order issuing Unlock 4 guidelines, Karnatak too has announced certain relaxations in public activities. It has now allowed 50% of teachers and non-teaching staff to visit schools for online classes. The students from 9th to 12th classes are permitted to visit schools from September 21st, subject to written consent from parents. The skills and entrepreneurship training is allowed. PhD scholars and PG students requiring laboratories are also permitted from September 21st. However, cinema halls, swimming pools, theatres and entertainment parks will remain shut. There is no relaxation given for institutions situated in the containment zones. Metro rail per service will commence from September 7th with necessary protocol. The monsoon session of Parliament will begin from the 14th of this month and continue till October the 1st. A notification issued by Lok Sabha Secretariat said that President Ramnath Kovind has called the lower house of Parliament to meet on Monday, the 14th of September at 9 a.m. Rajya Sabha will also meet at a different time on the same day as it has been decided to stagger the sitting of the two houses due to the COVID-19 guidelines. The Cabinet Committee on Parliamentary Affairs had earlier recommended that Parliament's monsoon session be held from the 14th of September to the 1st of October. Hectic preparations are underway for the session with several first-time measures because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The measures include testing of all MPs, staggered setting of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, and use of both chambers and galleries to accommodate members while following physical distancing norms. Indian Army said yesterday that PLA troops violated the previous consensus arrived at military and diplomatic engagements during the standoff in eastern Ladakh. PLA troops carried out provocative military movements to change the status quo in the intervening night of 29th of August and 30th August. However, Indian troops preempted this PLA activity on the southern bank of Pangong Tso Lake. Army undertook measures to strengthen its positions to thwart Chinese intentions to unilaterally change facts on ground. Speaking with AII News defense expert and director at Society for Policy Studies, Uday Bhaskar said that India has given a firm reply to the provocative military movements in the southern Pangong Lake area. He said that nation is committed to maintaining peace and tranquility through dialogue, but it is also equally determined to protect its territorial integrity. The preemptive action taken by the Indian Army along the southern bank of the Pangong Lake, to my mind, it is an expression of New Delhi's firm resolve and quiet restraint by way of the signal being conveyed to the Chinese PLA as also to the political leadership in Beijing. As I see it, the ball is now in China's court in relation to its own sincerity and commitment to peace and stability along the line of actual control through sustained dialogue. The Assam government is taking steps to implement the Arunodoy scheme from the 2nd of October this year. Replying to a question in the State Assembly today, Finance Minister Himanta Bishwa Sharma said that 830 rupees to be given per month to beneficiary families under the scheme. He said that widows, unmarried women, divyang and divorced women get priority in beneficiary selection. He said that 17,000 beneficiaries to be covered by Assembly constituency where population is between 1.5 to 2 lakh. 15,000 beneficiaries to get help in constituencies where population is below 1.5 lakh. In a series on Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat, today we bring you a special story about the initiatives taken at Vishakapatnam. Ek Bharat Shrest Bharat, the vision of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, is a platform to unite states, union territories to enrich the exchanges of culture, said ADG Dr. Murli Mohan, Regional Outreach Bureau Vijaywada. Speaking at the webinar organized by Regional Outreach Bureau Vijaywada, Vishakapatnam Gurdwara President Dilshah Singh Anand said, cultural bonding encompasses the beauty of sharing. The President also mentioned that his generation settled in Vishakapatnam 50 years back and adopted the serene Vishakapatnam and people of this city are calm and emotional, he added. Dhanrubha Dasyam, speaker of today's webinar, research scholar, sociology department, Andhra University said, Prime Minister's vision of Ek Bharat is a solace to Shrest Bharat. 
she mentioned that EBSB, the brainchild of Prime Minister, celebrates the unity of nation. This great initiative of Indian Union is indestructible, she added. Regional Outreach Bureau Assistant Director M. Srinivas Mahesh, officials of INB, participated in the webinar. In our series on Atmanirbhar Bharat today, we bring you a special story on robot Rakshak. In the fight against the spread of COVID-19 pandemic, the railways has designed a health assistant robot Rakshak, which can remotely communicate between doctor and patient. The medical aid robot is able to measure health parameters such as temperature, pulse, oxygen percentage. It can also provide medicines, food to the patients and make a two-way video communication between the doctor and the patient. It can move in all directions at all levels with a range of remote operations up to 150 meters. With a full charge battery, the Rakshak robot can work continuously for six hours and can carry up to 10 kg of weight in its tray. It is based on Wi-Fi and therefore does not require any mobile data. It also operates with Android mobile application. Mr. Rajiv Kumar today assumed charge as the new election commissioner of the country. A 1984 batch IAS officer, Mr. Kumar retired as the finance secretary. Mr. Kumar joins the election commission of India with chief election commissioner Sunil Arora and election commissioner Sushil Chandra. The 10-day Ganesh festival in Mumbai, Maharashtra, which was celebrated in low-key sans any fanfare due to COVID-19 restrictions and guidelines this year, culminates today. Immersion of Ganesh idols have begun since morning, but there are no processions for one of the most awaited events in the state. For immersion of household idols and small mandals, only one or two members from a family or housing society have been allowed to take the idol to the immersion sites. Big Ganesh mandals has had cancelled in advance the idol installation this year. More from a Mumbai correspondent. At the popular locations like Girga Chopati in South Mumbai, people are not allowed to enter beach for immersion and the devotees have been asked to hand over their idols to the deployed civic administration teams. Similar practice is being followed in other cities across Maharashtra at rivers and other immersion spots. The local administration have installed artificial tanks at various locations across their cities and marked circles maintaining social distancing so that crowding is avoided. The state government has also urged that small idols be immersed at home in buckets. Sonali Ghadar Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. Now let us take a look at today's weather update. The national capital Delhi may experience partly cloudy skies. The minimum temperature was recorded at 25 degrees Celsius and the maximum is expected to be around 35 degrees. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The city witnessed a minimum temperature of 24 degrees Celsius and will have maximum of around 30 degrees. In Chennai, the temperature will hover between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The city recorded a minimum temperature of 29 degrees Celsius, while the maximum temperature will be nearly 36 degrees. In Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 24 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while maximum will be around 34 degrees. The city is likely to witness partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. In Srinagar, the temperature will hover between 17 and 34 degrees Celsius. The city will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Leh will have mainly clear sky. The temperature will hover between 12 and 32 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit, the minimum temperature was recorded at 18 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 25 degrees. The area will have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Muzaffarabad may have generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. The place experienced a minimum temperature of 17 degrees Celsius, while maximum temperature will be around 24 degrees. Partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm expected in Itanagar. Minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius, while maximum will be around 35 degrees. Guwahati is also expected to have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunder showers. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Last rites of former President Pranab Mukherjee performed with full state honours in New Delhi. President, Vice President and Prime Minister lead the nation in paying homage to the departed statesman Pranab Mukherjee. JEE main exam for admission to top engineering colleges in the country being held today. Unlock 4 guidelines comes into force from today. More activities open up in COVID non-containment zones across the country. Nearly 10,17,000 COVID samples tested in the country in last 24 hours, 
over 28 lakh people recovered so far. And monsoon session of parliament to commence from the 14th of September. Hectic preparations underway in wake of COVID-19 pandemic. And with that, we end the midday news.